Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and today we're going to dive into the smallest, hippest, and somehow also most overlooked wine growing region in France, Jura. That's all. Let's go. When I started learning about wine, Jura was nowhere on my radar, and it wasn't even on the French wine region map in my WSET wine course book. There are a few reasons for that. First of all, it's France's smallest wine growing region with 2,080 hectares of vineyards, a limited production and varying yields. Also, the region's grape varieties and wine styles make it less accessible to a wider audience. But you could also say that exactly that is what makes the region so interesting to talk about for some years looking for the next big discovery. Apart from the omnipresent Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, the region is also home to Sauvignon, Trousseau and Pulsar, three grape varieties that are rarely found outside of the Jura. But Sauvignon is one of the oldest Vitis vinifera grape varieties. It is a parent of, amongst others, Sauvignon Blanc, Chenin Blanc and Silvana. In other regions, it's known as Tramina and Gewürz Tramina is its aromatic variant and it's the grape variety used for the most iconic wine in the region, Vin Jaune. Vin Jaune, the yellow wine, is made by letting Sauvignon wine age in barrel under a layer of floor yeasts, similar to the process used in Sherry. The wine develops nutty flavors, becomes slightly oxidized and tastes really dry and salty. One of the main differences between Vin Jaune and Sherry is that Vin Jaune is not fortified, so it contains less alcohol. And it's the only wine in the European Union that can be filled into the non-standard Clavelin bottle, which contains 620 milliliters of wine. And I think that's the reason, because it's not standardized, that it is not exported into the US. So for some reason, the customs can process this baby. I always wondered whether the floor film on Vin Jaune was actually what inspired the region's most famous son, Louis Pasteur, to do what he did. He grew up in the city of Arbois in the Jura region. And without his experience in wine, we might have never discovered the processes behind fermentation and consequently pasteurization. But all this talk makes me thirsty. I have a pretty nice lineup here and I'm going to finish the tasting with a bottle of 23 year old Vin Jaune. So let's dig in. I'm going to start this tasting with a red wine, which is weird, right? But I actually think it makes sense when it comes to Jura. The red wines of the region tend to be a little bit lighter and oftentimes a little bit less interesting. So I think it is better to taste them first and then concentrate on the more exciting, more concentrated, more complex white wines. So this is a Trousseau, which is one of the indigenous red grape varieties used in the region. The other one, Pulsar, tends to produce even lighter, more red-ish wines. And I'm not a huge fan of Pulsar, even though it is quite popular in some circles. Rousseau is planted on a couple of hundred hectares of vineyards in the region. And it is actually the same as Bastardo in Portugal. So the two grape varieties are the same. And no one really knows how it got from the Jura region to Portugal. I mean, there's this other mysterious link between the Iberian Peninsula and Jura, which is the style of floor aged White wine, sherry and vin jaune have quite a lot of things in common. And I don't think there's real historical evidence how that took place. So you can see this is a light colored red wine and it's fairly garnet. I mean, it's a 2015 vintage, so it's eight years old now, which is not necessarily well, common that you drink Trousseau this late. I think this is a very good one, so it might still be okay, but Let's let's see. Yeah, it smells of figs, cherries. It's quite light on the palate. It's actually juicy and velvety. It's not, well, you might expect it to be very acidic and low in alcohol, but it actually has 14% of alcohol and it has quite a lot of texture and richness and it's not super, not super fresh, but I really like it. I mean, it's definitely not a complex wine, but it's, it's a nice quaffable wine, you know, something that you can open and you don't have to think too much about it, even though there's some more substance there as well. But this is a wine that, well, if you have a plate of cold cuts, this is the wine to go with. But if you love concentrated and rich wines with lots of tannins, lots of body and, well, lots of fruit flavor, like ripe fruit flavor and oak 
flavor, then this, well, just don't drink it. But I'm going to rate it 87 points. I think it's a really interesting wine. It's not super cheap. I think it retails for somewhere around 40 US dollars, but it's pretty good. But now let's move on to the 2015 Domaine de la Pinte Sauvignon. Sauvignon is for me the most exciting grape variety planted in Jura because you don't find it in many other places and you don't find wines as expressive made from this grape variety in many other places. So I'm a big fan of Sauvignon. Like I mentioned earlier, it's one of the OGs in the Vitis vinifera family together with Pinot Noir and Guise Blanc. It's kind of weird that only Pinot is actually still really well known for producing great wines. But yeah, Sauvignon has played an important role in producing some of the most widely planted grape varieties in the world. Domaine de la Pinte is one of the, if not the biggest biodynamic estate in Jura. It's not easy to make biodynamic wines in Jura because the weather can be very variable and can get really wet. And that means that diseases spread quite quickly. And if you don't have all of the chemicals available at your disposal, you might lose a lot of your crop every year. And that does happen at Domaine de la Pente quite regularly. But the wine they put in bottle tends to be really good. They use a lot of old barrels, so you don't get a lot of toastiness from the barrique, but you get more oxidative, a little bit more complex wines that are really age-worthy. And well, let's taste this one. So the wine smells of tangerines, ripe, apple there's also a little bit of flavor of rye bread something like that on the palate it's really rich and concentrated but in the finish the acidity breaks it all up and well the finish is super fresh and very long this is exactly what i like about savanya it combines concentration and richness with lots of finesse and it brings flavors into the glass that some other grape varieties can't bring into the glass. This is good. So this wine with a poulain a la creme with morals, that's just perfection. That's exactly, that's what I could eat every day. So I'm going to rate this 93 points. I think it's absolutely delicious and it retails for somewhere around 40 US dollars. So this is actually a good value too. The next wine is the 2019 Le Gravier from Tissot. Stéphane Tissot is one of the most famous, if not the most famous producer in the region. He is very charismatic and very talented. He really knows his stuff. He produces some really outstanding wines. And I actually prefer his Chardonnays to some of his other wines made from the indigenous grape varieties from the region. They tend to be really delicious. By the way, many of the Jura wines are actually filled in bottles that say Jura on the bottle itself. So you get a totally different bottle shape there, which makes the wine even more special, I guess. Le Gravier is one of his single vineyard wines. The soil there is limestone and clay with small pebbles in there. And it actually is fairly similar to the Burgundian soil. I mean, there are quite a few similarities between Jura and Burgundy. It's not far away. The soil types are fairly similar. The climate has some similarities as well. For some time, it was kind of people thought that Jura is the place where you get better value, but that is changing quite a bit as production is very limited and the demand for Jura wines is growing as well. But the wines still tend to be cheaper than the wines in Burgundy because every wine region is cheaper than Burgundy. Okay, aromatically, this is more delicate. There's more lemon zest and well, green apple flavor, toasty oak, and a little bit of reduction. But on the palate, I mean, this is 14.5% of alcohol, so there's quite a lot of richness, but the acidity is so lively and refreshing, it's amazing. There's a little bit of nuttiness and there are influences from the maturation in oak and maturation on the lees, but it's all so well combined. I'm going to rate this 93 points, and I think at 50 US dollars retail, it's actually a pretty amazing wine. So let's finish this tasting by tasting the most famous wine from the region, Vin Jaune. 
Vin jaune is a bit of an acquired taste and some people hate the wine while others love it. I definitely love vin jaune and I also love phenol sherry. The wines tend to be really complex and really exciting. Vin jaune has the reputation to be really age-worthy, so some of these wines can age for many, many decades. I actually bought this bottle at the estate five years ago, maybe, and was wrapped in this uh, cling film when I got it and I never really touched it. So this is the occasion where I'm going to open it together with you. So feel special. Legend has it that the Clavelin bottle is actually 620 milliliters in size because that's what's left of a liter of vin jaune aged in barrel. So this is obviously not an exact science, but it is kind of true that quite a lot of the wine evaporates over time and therefore what's left in the barrel is actually really concentrated and rich. So this wine from the 2000 vintage was aged for six years in barrel under a veil, as they call it, of lees. And these yeasts actually change the wine quite significantly. They change the flavor of it, but they also eat all of what is left of the sugar in the wine. So the wine gets really dry and you get this nuttiness and well, wild curry flavors oftentimes. So it makes the wine really interesting. By the way, Jura is also the name of the mountain ranges found here in this region in Switzerland and in southern Germany. And these mountains actually gave the name to the Jurassic period, which is today really famous because it gave the name to the movie Jurassic Park. But there are no dinosaurs here, I think. Okay, looks like the cork is coming out all right. In one piece. That's, that's good. And I can already smell the wine. Vin jaune is usually consumed at cellar temperature, so you shouldn't drink it straight from the fridge. It should be more between 14 and 16 degrees Celsius. And it looks like liquid gold. Really beautiful. This wine really makes me happy, but I also know that a lot of people won't like it. I mean, this combo of nuttiness, soy sauce, there's also a little bit of curry flavor coming through. On the palate, it's just very dry, very fresh. The acidity tends to be higher than for sherry. And it's just, it's just really complex, but not fruity at all. So the wine will develop further in bottle. I don't think it's at its peak yet, but it's already really complex. And it's actually a great wine with food. If you have rich and concentrated dishes with creamy sauces, this goes beautiful, but there's something else I need to try right now. Give me a second. So the Jura is not only famous for its wine, but also for its cheese production. And this is Comte cheese, which is a beautiful match with Vin Jaune. Oh, so simple, but so good. Mm. Delicious. So I'm going to rate this wine 95 points. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It might even be a little bit too young right now, but it's delicious. So try some Vin Jaune. You might not like it, but if you like it, you will really like it. All right, this was a delicious tasting. The Jura region surrounds quite a lot of hype, but I think there is definitely something there. There are beautiful wines coming out of this region, distinctive wines that are special and different to, well, many other regions. I definitely have to say that even though this is pretty good, I do prefer the white wines that are just more beautiful. The Chardonnays can be outstanding and Sauvignon is just something really special. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what do you think about Jura? Have you tasted the wines before or not? Do you like them or don't you like them? Let me know down in the comments. I hope I see you guys again very soon. Until then, stay thirsty.